Hi. Hi, good. How are you? Hey, doing well. So Chloe, we first meet your character, Flynn, is a very genuine and loving character, and she gets herself entangled in the really scary events of this film, of this series, because she wants to protect her family. How would you describe her in your own words? Um, I would say that Flynn Fisher is a young woman uh, in, a, in a small town and that she has really kind of used virtual reality and, and playing these simulation games as a way to escape, uh, you know, kind of never really getting out of her city or her state. Um, and when she gets the opportunity to beta test a, a new headset from a, a mysterious company, she puts it on and she's transported not just to a game, but to a whole new world. And she soon finds out that she's operating a real robot body in the year 2099 in London. So it's uh, a really interesting character and I felt really lucky to jump into her shoes. I love it. Now, Jack, your character Burton, like the rest of the characters in this um, series, what originated from a book. Um, what would you, what did you find that process like of adapting this character for the screen and making him your own? Um, it was a lot of fun. You know, I really enjoyed the book. Uh, I'd be a fan of sci-fi and speculative fiction. And William Gibson is kind of, uh, he's really the foremost author in that genre in our day and age. Um, so I, I really loved the book and I thought that the relationship between Flynn and Burton was just so rich and so human and that would be such a fun thing to get into. And, um, you know, I thought as well about like people, you know, who would kind of influence the role and um, I kept coming back to, the band actually I'm, yeah. I'm a huge fan of uh leave on helm i think he's so amazing and he had this unbelievable presence um and so i watched as much as i could about him and um i just kind of kept that in the back of my mind as i was sort of trying to craft the role you know so hopefully there's a little bit of that kind of influence in there Absolutely. Chloe, we've seen you in a multitude of genres, um, but this, though it's sci-fi, it is, it's very unique. How would you say this project has differed from others you've worked on? Um, I think it's, you know, it, it definitely is genre and, it, and it's wonderful to return to doing um, sci-fi. But for me, I think this really differentiates itself in the fact that it's so grounded in humanity. Um, and no matter how kind of far we get, we can always boomerang back to Clanton and we can always understand that that's our home and that's our base and that you can trust Burton and Flynn and being able to really um, delve into those interpersonal relationships and to get into the psyche of that and, and uh, kind of carve those little moments out. It felt, I think, different than other characters, as well as the fact that I felt really um, naturally inclined to playing Flynn. You know, I think that she's very similar to who I am. In a lot of ways, I was able to be, uh, I think, very vulnerable in, in showing myself in, in the role as, as well as, you know, yeah, playing her. You're both incredibly natural in this role. And I think that that adds to the humane aspect of it. Um, it's very futuristic, mm -hmm. but it also feels like these are characters you can relate to in a sense. Now, the concept mm -hmm. of the show and The Sims, it's so interesting. And as I said, it's very unique. Um, you know, your characters are playing as these like interpersonal video games to mm -hmm. and to um, get further in life. Um, what was your thoughts on the storyline when you first came across it? Um, you know, I think that conceptually, like this is the closest thing that we really could get to what time travel might actually be like you know like the transfer of data basically between two different points in time is a really fascinating idea and um, so you know for me i thought that there was enough intrigue in that to make this feel like something really really original for an audience and mm -hmm. um, and you know the world around that that that's kind of been built by william gibson and by Jonah and Lisa and the team here at Kilter and particularly Vincenzo Natali, we have to give him a lot of credit because he brought the project to the team. Um, you know, it's just very, very rich. And um, so yeah, that was that was kind of it, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I love it. Chloe. Um I, my mind. What was, it, what was the exact question? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm my just, my we have no, my brain. No, it all. I totally get you. Um, your, thoughts on the, your thoughts on the original when you first came across the script. You know your thoughts on the whole concept of the sim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had my first meeting with Jonah and Lisa. I, so I guess like three years ago now. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we it was before the pandemic, and I, I had known about the novel by William Gibson and had um kind of seen that it had been picked up. Uh, and that it was going to happen. Um, 
And then when I got the the opportunity to meet with Jonah and Lisa and and to kind of even just understand that a William, William Gibson story would be told by, you know, such two incredible powerhouses in sci-fi, especially in sci-fi television, that felt, you know, wildly appetizing. Um, and I just felt like the team behind it was so uh, was 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 so brilliant with the fact that they wanted to not steer too far away from what the novel is about. Um, and I find that that's kind of where you end up straying wrong is when you you lose the the tenacity of the characters that we fall in love with as readers. Um, and so I just yeah, I, I, I loved that. And I loved the the scope of the show and, and how it was a really strong ensemble. And I think that it just holds so many um aspects of it that as an audience I don't think there's one person that couldn't find something they love about it to be honest I totally agree thank you guys so much have a great rest of your day thank you Thanks. hey Gary how are you guys good, thank you. good how are you good how are you so um Gary your character Wolf um he is Flynn's saving grace he might just be the key to unlocking some really interesting things that um she needs to know how would you describe him in your own words uh Wolf is a very um he's very caring like actually generous person at heart um very courageous although he seems uh he seems quite like uh he's very still like also he's, he presents it one way but he's actually going through um a ton of other things um it's, and it's just trying to be very grounded very rooted um especially when like considering he's in a world that's very um so different from ours right now and um yeah, I just I guess there's a lot of humanity with Wolf. It's, that's one thing I've I feel is uh one thing that attracted me to the character a lot. Um, yeah, <laughs> <That's> definitely, <cool. laughs> I definitely agree. Your character feels very much like someone that viewers can relate to, which is interesting in such a almost dystopian like setting. Um, now Jonah, I asked Vincenzo this. I'm curious what you have to say. You guys have been in production on this series for quite some time now. Um, how has your vision of it changed from start to finish? Do you think that it looks differently than what you originally thought it would look like? How has it evolved? Well, a lot more of it feels true now, now in the sense that you know, we started developing this uh, a little bit before the pandemic. Uh, Scott was writing and then we were shooting during the pandemic. Um, and events that seemed uh, certainly not implausible. There's nothing implausible about Gibson Presents in a book uh, as the jackpot. But the idea that um, that that we'd be kind of in it quite as quickly as as we are. You know, there's a there's a pandemic in the book, <laughs> among among other things. So we keep asking Gibson to tell us what's going to happen next year, and he kind of steadfastly refuses to to share it with us. Uh, but no, the, the the series I think it's it's even bigger, more beautiful, and more imaginative uh, than we'd hoped for. We're we're thrilled. Absolutely. I think there's a lot of um, very intense conversations that are had um, throughout the course of this series um, regarding things like technology, family, really staying true to um, the people you love and just being there for them. What do you hope that viewers, though this is a very entertaining, very scientific series, what do you hope that viewers take away from it? I, I just hope they enjoy it. Like, I hope they're like immersed in it and they, um, yeah, I just hope they care about all the characters and the story. Because also, one thing I think that's really great about Jonah and, and the team is that they, like, with this genre, like, a lot of things you can you enjoy it and you watch it and you're like, yeah, that's great. I, like, that can't happen. It won't happen. Or that looks like that's magic, whatever. But these guys make it believable. And it would be so cool if, like, you just could watch this and just, like, believe a lot of the, the characters and the intentions and some of the things that are going on. Um, I just hope people enjoy it. Lisa Vincenzo, how are you guys? Good, Good thank yes. you. So Days, is... but drinking caffeine, mm -hmm. so getting stronger by the moment. There we go. What time is it there? I don't even know. <laughs> oh, no, it's, it's very reasonable. It's the afternoon. Well, we have, we have no right to be this way. I have every right to be this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. As you should. Yeah. Now, um, you guys were tasked with um, adapting these book characters for um, a screen for a screening event. Um, and it's a very intense and very exciting script, um, just involving, you know, these simulations, these characters. What, to start us off, what was that process like? How did you go about it? Um, I uh, had the windfall of having this brilliant director bring me a book by the brilliant William Gibson to adapt. And then I had the great, great wisdom to hire the genius Scott Smith to adapt the book. And so, you know, for me, it was just the chance to work with such talented people uh, 
and you know we're all fans of uh william gibson and i think in adaptation uh there's always you know you always take into consideration the medium you know a novel is not the same as a series is not the same as a poem or a film you know and things have to change and grow and adapt and uh gibson was very open to that and encouraging of that so long as the essence of the story stay the same and the essence was why we all were drawn to this story you know the story of a young woman in you know the south of america with her family and friends uh trying to figure out what comes next in her life and getting a call from london that changes everything i think Lisa, of course, will credit herself the least with this, but I think Lisa was the one who really pinpointed what the core of the drama of the book is. Um, because if you read the book, it is intentionally challenging. William Gibson loves to drop the reader into a world without explanation. And then like a tourist left in a foreign country without a language book, you kind of have to find your way. And that's part of the, the joy of, of reading his work, but also the challenge and the challenge of adaptation. I think Lisa sort of understood that the heart of the story are the people in Clanton and specifically Flynn Fisher and, her, and what she wants as a character, which is very much analogous probably to what all of us want at this moment um, when the world feels like a very confusing and challenging place. But yeah, I think in a way it began with Lisa. Aww. You guys have done such a brilliant job because these characters feel so human-like in such a not necessarily human-like concept. And I think that's how you know you succeeded um, in that sense. Now, um, Vincenzo, Chloe was talking about how this has been in production for a very long time. I think she said over three years. How would you say that this project has changed from start to finish and the way that you predicted it was going to look? How does it compare to the final project? You know, it's odd because in preparation for these interviews, I looked at my old director's notes, which were written long before the show was even greenlit. And it's kind of similar. I was actually surprised at how much of the sort of underlying notions were retained right through to the end. But I think that's because of the book. I think that, as Lisa was saying, we were very, very sensitive to what makes the book special. And we're all kind of junkies of like, what's the next step in science fiction? And, and, and very eager not to repeat what others have done. And the book offered a path to that. And, and so I think it was kind of clear from the beginning. And then it just became refined. And I think where, where we feel like the, the series took another leap was when we cast it, because the actors did bring something to it that I don't think anyone could have anticipated. They were so terrific. Absolutely. I 100% agree. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Lisa, you are an attorney in addition to all of this. You are amazing. Oh my God, you're so sweet. I have to have a backup plan. You never <laughs> know when everything could just go to shit. You have you know? like 15 backup plans. Girl. You I are got a backup amazing. plan. I'm going to hang a shingle and represent people in court. <laughs> I love it so much. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Well, how are you guys? I'm very, very well. How are you doing? Doing well, you both are fantastic. I'm sorry, you sound like Jonathan no, no, no. How are you doing? <laughs> Very New York, very New York. <laughs> um, so to I'm start it off, you guys were tasked. You guys were tasked with playing very interesting characters because your characters are in this very strange futuristic world where people can play in these simulations to earn money and to get further in life. To start us out, tell me a bit about Charisse. Tell me a bit about Lev. What can viewers expect to see from them on screen? Oh, Lev's gonna. Uh, hopefully, Lev will surprise you. Lev's gonna try and uh, bridge as many worlds as he can. Uh, he's telling a very fine line with his world, the collect. Um, I, I, I think he wants his power and his control and he's going to be very careful who he upsets along the way, whether it's the formidable Charisse or whether it's his own family or uh, uh, the extraordinary Alexandra Billings and mm. the character Lobe. Uh, he is, he is uh, walking a tightrope and we'll see whether he gets away with it. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, they're, they're both sort of struggling or, or dominating for power i just think i think the difference between lab and sharice is that sharice that might not appear so initially actually is working to serve the greater good whereas correct me if i'm wrong the um perhaps your priorities are a bit more well, it depends what we perceive to be the greater good well this is true yeah. but sharice is right and that is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> this Battle is going to go on. These two vipers are going to be yeah. nose to nose. 
I love it. Now, um, your characters were adapted and the storyline were adapted from a book. Um, and what's really interesting about this um relationship um with between you on screen is that your characters are very authentic to the book, but you also make them your own. How did you find that process to be of just creating this them for this new world? I mean, it's in the writing. Uh, I the, the writing is incredible. The language, the rhythm, and they they are very clear characters. They're very complex and depth, and they so many layers. And you think you've sort of this. Well, for me, I felt like I'd landed on something, yeah. and then I was surprised again by as you as you read the script. I mean, uh, you you sort of just have to honor what's on the what's on the page. I wasn't familiar with the with the book beforehand. Um, I know you sort of attempted to read it in a very short space of time. <laughs> Um, it's a collage. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a collage and a collaboration. You know, we, we may be, you may see us as the final product, but you know, I was certainly for me. We spoke about this. Those costumes were so incredible that you put these costumes on and and you look in the mirror and you think, "That's his Lev." Yeah, you step into that world. You don't couldn't you? imagine it until you had the feel of it. You know, the shoes and and then you walked on the sets and the scale of the sets and you and that you know yes there's a lot of special effects but they also built so I much mean, yeah. so as we, as the process came together you you just been inspired by everything around you mm. and and so these characters grew as we as we started to perform them and, you know we have great directors we have great directors because it, it is such a complex story and, and you are jumping from different in different timelines and, and the way we shot, you know, so we'd sometimes we shoot episode one in the morning and we'd be shooting episode eight in the afternoon. So you're sort of jumping around the place. Yeah. But at no time did our, did our directors, they always knew, if not even yeah. where I was, they always knew exactly where we where we were. And so they were a great point of reference to go back yeah. to. So like you say, it really is, it's not, we developed these roles to, well, I certainly developed Sharice with the help of everybody else. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, this is one of those shows, like you were saying with the set that you watch it, and you're like, how was any of this filmed? Um, it's very interesting. You create this whole new world um, on screen. What was that filming process like? What was that dynamic on set? What did you find to be challenging, exciting? Well, we shot it during COVID. Mm. So believe it or not, there was a, you know, a tickle nose swab up, up each nostril several times a day and mm -hmm. in bubbles, sometimes having to stay mm. removed from other people. So again, credit to... The creators and the directors while we're being so fractured in the filmmaking they managed to keep the whole uh in their minds and in, in how they shot it i you know that that yeah. credit to them because it was no small task it was a huge production yeah and things would change every day you'd have a shooting schedule but someone had you know caught covid or we all got COVID, we all got covid at some point yeah <laughs> at some close contact at some point and say that would have to change you'd have to yeah. sort of be ready and it was quite it was what was the camaraderie? Yeah, wasn't there? We shot it in the yeah. height of the Delta variant in London yeah. during the European football. Yeah. I mean, you couldn't have been in more chaos in London if you tried. And I tell these you, guys held it together. Yeah. yeah. And London's not like Americans, are they? They're like, ah, whatever. Not wearing a bloody mask. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a bit more, you know. I know that the Americans land. And the Europeans. Why are the pubs all open? Why is everyone in the street? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what we do for a point. Yeah. COVID what? I'm in a point. Mm. So, yeah. Never a dull moment. We were in bubbles. We were in very safe bubbles. Yes. I love it. Thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day.